Without a doubt, one of the most important things that you can do for your stock or investment portfolio is to add a good selection of ETFs. These ETFs allow you to reap the returns of a specific sectors, markets, etc. And they're a really good way to invest passively on these types of assets. But the key question is, how do you know what are the best ETFs for you to invest in? In this video, I'm going to share with you how it is that you can build an ETF screener that works on your Excel or Google Sheet spreadsheet so that you can quickly identify attractive ETFs to invest in based on different criteria that you may want to pick on your own, such as expense ratio, past performance, and whatnot. Okay, so the goal is that at the end of the video on your Excel or Google Sheet spreadsheet, you're going to have an ETF screener right here that you're going to be able to utilize to find attractive ETF investments opportunities based on your specific criteria a lot easier now the first thing that you will need to have is to find a stock list so let's say that you're looking to invest in ETFs that invest in real estate in that case you would do something like real estate ETFs and you can also go to a site like this that provides you with a whole bunch of ETFs so you could go ahead and copy paste these different ETFs on your spreadsheet the other thing that you could do is manually add each ticker if you have them memorized or since the method that we're going to be using to get the data for the ETF screener uses the same ticker system as Yahoo Finance, you can use Yahoo Finance itself. So let's say that you wanted to know what the S&P 500 ticker would be. So for example, we would just do VU, which is an ETF for the S&P 500. And this is the ticker that you would use. Now, if you're looking for international stocks or ETFs, you would be using the ticker that they include with the X tension and you will see what I mean in a second so now what we're gonna do is through Y sheets and this is the beauty about this you don't have to manually get the stock list you can get the stock list automatically I was just showing you the alternatives to this you can go on Y screener and then here you're going to be able to select a whole bunch of criteria so one of them that we want is ETF another one is going to be the dividend and then we're going to get rid of this let's say that the price is important to us we'll look at price events is etf is actively trading and then we're going to get rid of this filters so once we have this we're only going to keep this filters that we have so let's say the price is greater than five dollars is actively trading yeah is etf yeah because we only want etfs and the dividend is greater than two dollars per share so now you can click on get data and automatically you're going to get the stock list itself the one thing you need to know is that this white screener right now it's in beta so there might be some bugs so watch out for that but in general you will see that everything works really really well so in this case we have the symbol i'm gonna zoom in so that way you can see the data a little bit better so we have the symbol or in this case the list of different symbols and you can see how there's some international etfs as well that meet this criteria so this is to from the toronto stock exchange this is from the paris stock exchange etc etc if you go to the top we have the company name which in this case is not really company name is an etf name the other thing we have is the market cap great sector industry yeah it makes sense this information is empty the beta again because this is on beta you may not or you may actually see the information by the time this video is released as we're fixing many things but the price and the market cap are going to be absolutely accurate and then we also have the dividends so now that we have this we can go and just sort the information however we want so for example show me the companies that have the uh, lowest dividend show me the companies that have the highest dividend now and now we can also so sort by exchange as well so here we have the parents toronto stock exchange so here we go we also have this exchange as well so this allows you to slice and dice the data any way that you want i'm going to select all the information back up now where the real secret of the etf screener comes into place is that it's not only important to look at this information some of this information you know it may not be the most useful information out there 
So what really matters, there might be some other custom information that you would like to get. Some of that information could be things like, for example, the dividend yield of a particular ETF. Another one could be the performance of that particular ETF, expense ratio, etc. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add that information to the ETF screener. And I'm going to show you how it is that you can, once you have that information, you can then screen for that information as well. In order to do that, since we're using Y sheets, what we need to do is to look at the Y sheets functions. So in this case, let's just look at the Y function, but all the functions are the same. If you click here on available data, this will take you to this part of the website where you will see each function that is available on Y sheets. And then here you will see what data is available for that function. So in this case, we're mostly concerned with price data. So that's for the Y's price function as well as this wise funds function. So from here, what we're going to get is the expense ratio, which is very important for ETFs. And we're also going to look at the NAV. So those are the two things that we're going to get from here. And just to demonstrate the point as well, we're going to look to get the real time price of this ETFs as well. And then lastly, looking at the key metrics that are right here, we're also going to look at adding the dividend yield. And once we do that, those are the main criteria that we're going to screen for, but the same method applies to all of the different data that you can see is available through Y sheets. And I forgot, we're going to add one more item to that list. And this is going to be the five year price change. Okay. So now we have the data and we also have the columns that we're looking to add. So let's go through it. The first thing that I'm going to do actually, and you will see why after is I'm going to get rid of the filters. So if I go to the top, now there's no filters. We're going to add the filters after. So first we're going to look to get the dividend yield. One thing that you need to know is that we're still adding coverage to a lot of ETFs. We have coverage for over 50,000 stocks and ETFs is something that we recently added to Y sheets. So there might be some ETFs that there's no data for. So just keep that in mind. But for the majority, there should be data available. So in this case, we're going to use the Y's function, which you can see how it works right here. So it asks you what's the symbol, what's the parameter or the parameters. So that's going to be the dividend yield. And then what's the period? In this case, we're going to use TTM, which is the trailing 12 months. But what this means is the actual dividend yield of the company right now based on the latest dividend payments and the current stock price. So we do that, click enter. And as you will see, the data will update. Perfect. So now we can go ahead, zoom in. And what we could do is just double click here and this will automatically autofill the formula, which in this case, the formula is going to be wrong. So let's get rid of that. What we need to do is we need to lock this in first. Once that is locked in, we can go ahead and just double click here and you will see how the dividend yield will automatically populate for you. So now we have the dividend yield of all these companies. This is loading. So we'll load a load. There might be some that are missing. Just keep that in mind. And then now we're going to look to get the expense ratio for the expense ratio. We need to use the wise funds function. And in this case, the way it works is simple. It asks you what's the symbol that you want. So we're going to select the symbol and what's the parameter or the parameters that you're looking to get. So in this case, this is blocking. There's just a little bug on Excel, but we're looking to get the expense ratio. So we select the expense ratio, lock it in. And now we can put this as a percentage, add more decimal points. Again, there might be some information missing. So this is why that's that. But you will see how the data will automatically populate. And now you can see some of the different expense ratios of this ETFs. And the next thing that we're going to add now is the price. For the price, this is quite simple. We need to use the wise price function. It's going to ask us what is the symbols and the parameters that you're looking for. In this case, we're looking for the price and we're going to look to get data for all these different symbols. So we're going to select the symbols and then we're going to select price. 
click enter and as you can see right away this will populate and provide us with the price for all these different ETFs and this is real time you will see that this is actually real time in a second but now we have one more and this is the five-year price change so in this case what are the symbols so we're going to enter the same list of symbols comma and then in this case if you remember the parameter is 5y this is the price change over five years so now we can go ahead and do this so like percentage and here we go now we have all the information that we're looking for in our screener for etfs and just to show you that this is actually live data what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the add-on click on refresh live data and you will see how the live data Data will automatically update so this includes the dividend yield expense ratio price etc okay great so now you have all the data available right here and all together you can see how everything is turning out now if you want to filter what is the best way to do it so we could add a filter and we could say something like show me the companies or the ETFs that have the highest dividend yield however the problem is that if you do that every single single cell unfortunately because the way that excel works will refresh and so you will have to wait for the data to automatically update for you for that reason what i recommend that you do is this you're gonna take your screener that is almost done select all the data copy go into another tab and you're going to paste as values okay great so now we pasted the values perfect now what we're gonna do is we're going to copy this we're going to paste it right here perfect and now we're going to expand the columns great and now what we can also do is we can go ahead and select all the data go down and now right here we're going to paste the formatting only so that way we have the same formatting that we had before and this is now where we're going to filter the data so how are we going to do that and how are we going to make sure that it's dynamic the way that we're going to do that is by using cell references so i'm going to select equals and i'm going to select in this case this this is going to pull the same data and now look at this so i can just go ahead do that and I'm gonna do this, I believe there's like 300 and something companies. So I'm gonna keep dragging this until I don't see anything else. So let's see, here we are. Now you see that it's zero, zero, zero. So at this point we can just simply delete this. We can go back to the top and you will see how now all the data is present and it's live. So if I go ahead and this is the thing that you're gonna do with your screener. If you want live data to refresh, for example, something that you could do is just go here, click enter the price will refresh and in this case 8298 you will see that this is the same number 8298 but the beauty about this is that for this this is the tab that you're going to be using for filtering so as you can see now you have a filter here and now we can go ahead and do whatever we want so that's the cool thing we can go ahead and do something like show me the etfs that have the lowest dividend yield the ones that have the highest dividend yield and you can do the same for the old other fields as well so in this case show me the ones that have the lowest performance and the best performance so you can see how that applies you can also apply conditional formatting as well if that helps for your analysis so you could select the dividend yield column for example and then click on conditional formatting and then highlight cell rules and then you're going to go to greater than and in this case if greater than two percent for example this is going to be green so as you can see automatically all the cells that meet that criteria are going to be green and this is a good way to be able to visualize data as well so there you go this is exactly how you build a custom made etf screener and the best thing about this is that this also applies to stocks as well now you know how to build a custom etf screener that works on your excel and google sheets spreadsheets so be sure to use this knowledge so that you can create the 
screener that you've always been wanting to make and use that information so that you can make good investment decisions for yourself and those people that you most care about. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications on so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this that's going to allow you to take your investing game to the next level. I'll see you in the next one.